have to do these Zoom calls. Well, I decided to do these Zoom calls. So my name is Kim Bash, and I'm originally from South Africa. And I've been living in Israel now for the last 18 years, and my Hebrew is still terrible. Um, and I've been working in real estate for the last 10 years. And during the Corona times, a lot of my friends were saying to me, you know, we want to make Aliyah, we want to come, but we can't necessarily afford Jerusalem. We can't afford the major cities, but we want Anglo communities. So where can we go? So I started to do um, a bit of investigations and looking into different communities around Eretz Israel and looking where there were soft landing communities, where Anglos had already established communities and they were being successful in those communities. So that's how this whole thing came about. And um, I'm still selling real estate, but I'm very focused on finding people the right communities, um, whether it's to secure a home or really to make Aliyah and make Israel your home. So um, let me just let these people in here. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's get this person in here. So we've been doing every week, we focus on a different community and it's been absolutely amazing. And um, it's been very encouraging. People are actually moving to these communities that we are showcasing. So tonight we are doing Hashmanayim, which has also been very popular and on my list of requests for many, many people to do. So I wanna start off by saying thank you to those people living in Hashmanayim for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, and what's going to be is it's going to be a very informal setting. We got the people who are on Hashmanayim, I'm going to ask to unmute yourselves. And at the end, when everybody's introduced themselves and told us a little bit about themselves, I've also got some questions that were sent to me previously by some people who want to know more about the community. And I will probably just address people at random. Um, so, and then at the very end, we'll have an open answer session for anybody who would like to ask one of the people from Hashmanaim a direct question. At the end of the call, um, we okay. will also offer information about um, real estate opportunities, whether it's renting or buying in the area, um, as well as a chance to make um, a meeting with myself, um, if anybody would like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me about Aliyah, about real estate opportunities as well in Israel. So there's a chat box, as you all know, and I'm going to be putting my email address. You can also follow me on Instagram as well as on Facebook. Okay, so I think we're good to go. So um, I'm going to start off with, um, we had a great video that we put up about Hashmanayim. And I want to say thank you so much to Brianna, who's a, actually a, known Brianna for many years. And so nice to see you again. And thank you so much. You had like over, I think, one and a half thousand, one thousand something views on Facebook on your video that you put up for us. Thank you so much. Um, so I'd like to start off, if you can just introduce yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your family and why you love living in the community. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Brianna. Um, I've lived in Israel for... 14 years this summer, um, and we've moved around uh, different communities. We started off in Yerushalayim, we lived in Beit Shemesh, Tel Aviv for two years, and Modi'in for five years. And for the last five years, we've uh, I've been living um, here in Hashmonaim, and we built a home here uh, just recently. We've been in our new home for one year. Um, the reason that we decided to stay in Hashmonaim is uh, we have five kids, um, our oldest is 11 and our youngest is one. Um, and it's a beautiful Orthodox community that's closed on Shabbat. That was the main pull, pull for us, um, that our kids can just run free, mainly on Shabbat. Um, and there are no cars um, in the community that are going on Shabbat. Um, we're close to Modi'in, that's our go-to city. Um, it's about a 10 minute drive away with traffic, um, usually on a good day. Um, and um, we just love it here. The people are very friendly. Um, it's a very warm, welcoming community. Um, you can get your 
invited out for Shabbat, every Shabbat. Um, our kids have a lot of friends. They're constantly in and out of each other's homes. And we just love it here. There are a lot of Anglos, a lot of English speakers here. We actually just recently moved to a more um, Israeli part of the Yishuv. Um, and we're loving it. Great. Okay. <laughs> she brings me up to one of my questions, which is on the list that one of um, the questions that were sent in before, is if you can tell us a little bit about the different... Um, you know, it's a big place, Hashmanayim. Well, not so big, but tell us about the different different communities within Hashmanayim. Like, are there two? There's the Israeli community, the Anglos. There is, yeah. So it's basically, I mean, if you're really going to be generalizing here, there's like a more Anglo side and there's a more Israeli side. I hope that my fellow Hashmanayim uh, <laughs> people will agree with me here. Um, and both communities within Hashmonaim are very welcoming. Um, now that we're in the more Israeli side, it's we hear a lot more Hebrew here. Um, but again, very, very welcoming and friendly. Great. And you mentioned that you have five children. Are yes. you able to tell me the ages of your children and also where they go to school? Okay, so, um, so our baby is one. She's home with me now. Uh, then our next one up is three, or he actually just turned four, um, and he's in the Gan here in Hashmonaim. Our next one up is a seven-year-old daughter. She's going to be going to second grade, and she goes into, she goes in the local, um, it's called the local Mamad school here. It's the local religious public school here that's on the Yishuv, and she can walk to and from school. Um, and then our next two boys up are um, nine and 11, and we're actually sending them to a school in the nearby, um, it's outside of Hashmonaim, um, but um, it's a school that we feel is more appropriate for them. Um, they were in the school here and now we're sending them over there. We had one in the school over there already for a year and now we're moving the, um, our other one there for the coming school year, if we actually have a school year. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Brianna. I'm going to, we're probably going to come back to you. Some people are typing already that they have some questions and please feel free on the chat. If anybody from Hashmanayim wants to answer the people that are asking questions on the chat, please feel free to do so. So um, I want to ask, um, and again, some, I haven't met everybody. So um, is Edith on the phone? Epstein? Hi. Hi, Edith. How are you? Good. Hi, everyone. Um, I actually, okay, my name is Edith. I've been living in Hashmonaim for, I guess, almost 22 years. Wow. Um, we're a mixed marriage, so to speak. I grew up in Israel. I made Aliyah when I was a toddler. My husband, we officially made Aliyah after we got married, and we've been living in Hashmonaim for many years. Um, our kids are older. My oldest is um, 25. I have a kid. She's a student. I have an army, a chayal, and then I have a hesdernik, and then an 11th grader. So we've really lived through Hashmonaim from Gan through um, graduating high school and into uh, the army and university. I just want to make one comment about what Brianna mentioned. Um, and I saw there's a question about, about Anglo side and Israeli side. I don't think, I'm not sure we, that's a correct way of defining Hashmonaim as sides. I think the community here is very mixed. We do have Israelis and we have uh, Anglos, we have um, Sephardi community, we have Ashkenazi community, we have more from, it's not really like the community f is geographically divided into sides. Um, there may be some streets with a little more concentration of Anglos or Israelis, but it really is mixed all over. Um, so there isn't the Anglo side, if you want to move into Hashmonaim, there isn't an Anglo side. It's, there's Anglos everywhere. We're very loud. We hear, everybody hears English a lot, but there's definitely a lot of uh, Israelis and a lot of people from varied kind of uh, background and religious, uh, there's a variety, which is, I think, the wonderful thing about Hashmonaim, that there really is a variety of um, people. And it's a wonderful, warm community. And that is, I think, its biggest pull. Do you, um, do you work? 
Yes, I do, but I have my own business. I work from home. Okay. And in terms of if you're an Anglo and you don't speak any Hebrew, is that a problem? As far as working or as far as living here? Just around and living. Is there enough English around for people to get, get by? Well, in Hashmonaim or in the area in general, you definitely can get by with English. You hear English spoken a lot. If you go to the Makolet, if you go to the school, um, there definitely is a lot of English spoken. I think that may be sometimes a little of a problem because people may not make enough of an effort to, to speak more in Hebrew because it's very easy to get away and get by with just speaking English. So, but at the same time, it is easy for someone who's make Aliyah, you do feel comfortable. It is easy to um, be part of the community and be part of what's going on. There's usually messages of the community are translated into both Hebrew and English. So even messages from the school, I believe, but there definitely is a support system for Anglos making Aliyah. Great, thank you so much. I'm gonna go now to uh, Rafi. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Rafi Shulman. I've been living in Hashmonaim for about five years. Um, actually, we moved to move from New Jersey uh, primarily because my sister Laura was there as well. With her family lived here, and we wanted to be together. But one of the things that that I loved about Israel is that it reminded me of my childhood. I grew up here uh, about 25 years ago. We lived in Rehovot, and Israel back then was a very different country and much more laid back. And when we came to visit, we came to visit Hashmonaim, I fell in love with the country again because I saw the kids walking around. I saw the kids biking. In fact, when we came here, uh, we went out for Sukkot and our young, one of our daughters was in first grade and the people we went to visit, the daughter who was in second grade said, let's go sukkah hopping and we'll go, you know, they, they, they hop from sukkah to sukkah. And they came back at 10 o'clock at night and no one thought twice about it. It was fine, it was great. And, for us, that's a big part of uh, why we love living here is because for the kids, there's an uh, opportunity to be so independent. They can come and go, they can do, uh, they close uh, the, the Yeshua on Shabbat, so you really feel that special Shabbat feeling. <clears throat> and like Brianna said, um, you know, it's, it's a small issue, but it's near Modin. When I first made Aliyah, I lived in Tel Aviv, and so it's easy to get to get into Tel Aviv and, and easy to go to Yerushalayim, so it's kind of in the middle. Um, and so uh, from our point of view, um, from, from myself, from my wife and our four kids, it's really been an amazing, uh, amazing uh, uh, um, kind of experience. And uh, it, it helped that there's a lot of Anglos. My kids, my oldest was 10 and then our, our other kids were younger. And so it was very much a soft landing when we got here. And the support for them in school was really good. So for a number of factors, we've really loved it here. And uh, you know, I think for many people, it's a, it's a great place to be. And Rafi, where do your kids go to school? On the Yishuv? So they do. So our two oldest are two boys, 15 and 13. They go to Nertamid, which is the Yeshiva here. And then um, my older daughter actually goes uh, to another school, uh, which is about five minutes away. And then my youngest one is in Gita Aleph on the, in the school here. And so they really have... Uh, you know, uh, we, we've been very happy with the schools, thank God, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a great experience for our kids. Do a lot of people go out of Hashemalayim to schools? So the girls, when they get, um, when they get past sixth grade, so, um, when they get into seventh grade, they have to go out of the issue because they don't have an option here. So uh, there's a number of schools in the neighborhood. There are some girls that go to Mundin and Nyland, you know, some go to Yerushalayim. And so uh, yeah, a lot of it depends on, on the kid and, and what the parents are looking for. So uh, there are options. Um, I would say most of the kids stay on the issue, but there is a decent percentage who go to different schools based on what the kids uh, are interested in, you know, what they feel most comfortable in. And in terms, somebody asked a question here, and maybe um, maybe somebody else will answer later on, but in terms of the demographics of the area, is it very mixed? Young families, retirees? What, so what so, it, so it, it, is, it is a mix in that there's the older generation people that moved here, I would say 20, 25 years ago that are now in their 60s, and you know they're still living here, and they built the community, and so you have... Uh, you have that generation. And then there are younger couples. Again, um, 
the, the younger couples that are coming here either because their parents are here or the grandparents are here to help out and so they're moving here. They typically are renting. Um, so there is a nice mix between you know, the, younger, the younger families who are in their late 20s, early 30s and have maybe one or two kids. Um, and, uh, you know, and so, so yeah, you, just, you do have a mix of those, both Israelis and Americans. Do you find that the children um, move out of Hashmanayim when they get old and marry, or do they stay on the yeshuv? So a little bit of both, but it is expensive to buy here. And so for a young couple starting out, um, there are a number of people that will move out um, in moving up north, moving south, or to the periphery where it's more affordable. Um, so, you know, that, that is one issue that, you, you know, if you think about moving to Modi, into Hashmonim, you have to think, you have to keep in mind now it is a lot more affordable than, than some of the cities, Modin, Tel Aviv, Yerushalayim, like you mentioned, but for younger couples that are starting out, um, that is a challenge that they have to think through. And, you know, those that can't afford it will move out, especially if the kids are still young. It's not so much of an issue with schools. And so they'll look for areas that are more affordable for them, but there's still good deals here. And so, you know, it really depends on everyone's budget and what they're looking for, of course. Great. Thank you so much. Sure, of course. Is um, Sharon on the phone? Is she on the call? Me? Yeah. Oh, hi, Sharon. Oh, and hi. And Akiva, right? Right. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why you chose to live on the Yishuv? So uh, let's see, we chose the Yishuv in, at the very end of, no, end of 2004. So when we looked at it, it was actually a little different than it is now, but it gave us a feeling that it still gives us of um, a simpler time. I mean, Rafi, you mentioned what it was like to grow up here, and that it reminded you of growing up here. It kind of reminded me of growing up in upstate New York in the 70s, you know, just a little bit simpler, a little bit more low key. And we're both from upstate New York and we both just really felt at home and sort of out of town, if anyone can relate to that expression. Um, we're both physicians, we both have found work here, we're very happy. Our kids range in age from 18 to 11, um, with three boys and one girl. They've all gone to school here on the issue. The youngest one, who's a girl, will have to leave the issue after next year, but we've been very happy with uh, the yeshiva here in Mer Um What else can we? Um, I'm a pediatrician. I actually have uh, hours on the issue a little bit, a few hours on the issue, but I mostly work in Beit Shemesh. There is a clinic um, on, the, on the Yishuv, uh, Khalid, there are actually four health funds in Israel, if you've heard of. Um, there's Khalid, there's uh, Maccabi, Meucharet, and Lumit. Um, right now, Khalid, Khalid uh, has a practice, actually I think Meucharet also has a practice on the Yishuv. Um, but there, are, it depends, it doesn't matter what health fund you're in, you can go to find offices anywhere, five minutes away in Kirat Sefer, many in Modi'in, um, but some people, uh, choose to come here. It's a small office. Um, it's, uh, it's nice. I do a few hours a week here. And uh, it's, uh, it's really an amazing community um, from my perspective. Uh, it's, there's a lot of chesed that's being done here. A lot of uh, people really helping each other out in a very respectful and beautiful way. Uh, that's what I like the most about it. It's just really just good people doing good things for people. A lot of learning going on here. Um, and it's a great chevra. It's a great chevra, both the Americans and the Israelis. I've, I go to a shul, uh, Rimon, uh, uh, which is, I would say, maybe 70% Israeli, uh, maybe 30% American. Maybe it's a little more American now, but um, I have friends that are both Israeli and Americans. I feel very comfortable uh, hanging out with everyone. And it's a very friendly place. Um, people are really good people, really, really good people. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud that I live here. And it's been a great place to raise my kids. Um, and uh, it's a great place to be. Somebody's asking on the chat, is there a dentist on the Yeshuv? There are dentists on the Yeshuv. So, um, one of the dentists has a practice right on the Yeshuv. And another one uh, has a practice in Modin, not far away. Um, dentistry is now, has changed a lot in Israel in the last five to 10 years in the sense that the Kupot, the health funds now also have dentistry as part of their 
um, system. So the private dentists, uh, there are fewer. People used to say, oh, go into dentistry because that'll do really well in Israel, it's private. That's changed a little bit because the Kuhot now have dentists as well. Although sometimes you still want your private dentist and someone you know and who's gonna do a good job. You don't always know who you're getting in the Kuhot. Um, so, but there is a practice on the issue. There is a dentist on the issue and also not so far away. Did you, when uh, you, you mentioned that you both are physicians, did you both have to do your um, licenses and do exams when you came to Israel? Uh, I, I did not have to do any licensing exams at all because I was fully licensed in the States. I had to do three months in the hospital. I was at Shari Tzedek. It was a very good experience for me. Helped me learn the system, learn medical Hebrew, which I didn't know so well. Um, but I started working pretty much six months after I made Aliyah. Sharon had a little different story. So. My experience was different. When we first moved, I was commuting back to the States every few months for the first year. And then I took another year where I was home trying to get myself and everybody else settled. And then I did have to go back into the hospital for a year. I'm an ophthalmologist and we all have to do another year of, uh, it's basically like residency. And because I hadn't finished my exam in the States and I had taken that time to make Aliyah and, and bring everybody over, I did have to do my exams here in Hebrew. But most people, you know, if you come over fully licensed from the States, it depends on your specialty. Ophthalmologists all have to do one year in a hospital. And then I started working uh, for, also for Kupat Cholim for Kupat where Akiva is in Beit Shemesh. And now I'm also working in Modi'in in a smaller private practice. Sharon, can I ask you a question? Um, I'm yeah, a registered di sorry, I, I have no, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, I'm okay. a registered dietitian and I'm just wondering, you might not know, but I, I thought I'd, I'd ask anyway, since you're a medical professional, do they have like dietitians in the hospitals? I think they yeah. do. They, they have, they have they in should, the hospitals. Right? I don't know more than I do. Yeah, they have in the hospitals and in the and in Kupot Cholim. Um, they definitely have a lot of dietitians here. I don't know how well they get paid, <laughs> but they right, do. Right, of I course. Think <laughs> people do private also. Um, they're, they're pretty much in, in everything you have obviously the public health, but you also always have private things. People are always looking for something private, especially Americans. Um, uh -huh. It's hard for, for any uh, new OLEC community, whether they're from France or, or from mm -hmm. America, people want someone who speaks their language, literally their language, both sure. the, the, la the language itself and also just is, you culturally. Know, culturally certain right. references. So, so people are willing to pay for that sometimes because they want to feel comfortable. Um, so uh -huh. there are definitely jobs uh, in the uh -huh. public sphere. Would I have to change my registration? Like, would I have to take a new exam, or you wouldn't know about that? I don't know for dietitians. Yeah. Every single every single field is different. Um, I'm not sure, but you can find that out through. Where, nefesh where do people find out about this kind of thing? Like nefesh for nefesh. You usually, nefesh for nefesh is very well informed. Oh, okay, okay, sounds good. Sorry. Um, no, not a problem. It's on my list of. A lot of people are asking me, nurses, you know, the dentistry, et cetera. So we have a lot to look into. And I think it does depend on, on a number of different factors. I want to ask, are the uh, Waxmans on the call? Is Shifi on the call? I'm not sure who's joining us. Is she on? Shifi, I don't know if she's on. Okay, we'll come back to Shifi. Lara. Oh, no, there's David. David's on. Oh, David's on. Okay. David's on. Oh, David's on? Okay. David. David, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Unmute. I'll unmute. Oh, there you are. Now I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. You, you um, it said Shifra Waxman. I said, hi, David. Okay. Hi. Nice to, nice to meet all you guys. And, um, you know, so much has been said already about Kashmunayim. I would just add one thing. We're here 17 years. Um, we've got five children ranging from age 20, almost 25, down to um, Bar Mitzvah. And uh, so similar to Eddie, we've been through the whole educational cycle here. Um, and Eddie covered that already. And, um, you know, and so much has already been covered. I would add, add just a couple of things that I hadn't heard mentioned. One is that there is really a tremendous amount of shiurim here. And now we're, of course, in virtual mode, but we have shiurim, you know, from a wide variety of uh, 
very, very uh, strong Tamil um, Chachamim here, both um, in English and in Hebrew. And there's a Chabur on Monday nights and a regular shiur. There's basically shiur in, you know, every night of the week for uh, any sort of topic or style that people enjoy. There's also dafyomi, multiple dafyomis, uh, you know, every day, um, multiple minyanim. I should also add, again, in, in Corona, it's a little different, but, you know, typically, um, so everybody can find the spot, you know, for uh, yeah, adult and learning and dot, if, if they so like, this year for men and for women. There's also matan here, you know, as well. I think it's uh, once or twice a week in the mornings. Um, I would also add for people that enjoy, um, you know, sports and, and physical fitness, you know, biking, basketball, whatever it might be, there's tremendous opportunity, especially biking here in our area. Benjamin Forest is very close by. Um, people jogging all the time on Saturday night, right at the Shabbat, the streets are filled with people, uh, you know, jogging. Um, it's a beautiful, you know, we have beautiful views here. And, um, you know, those are just a couple of things that I thought hadn't yet been covered. I would just summarize one last thing is that when we moved here 17 years ago, we never could have dreamed what an incredibly great decision that was for our kids, for ourselves, for our family. And exponentially, I would say it was the best thing we've ever done in our lives by a factor of, I can't even measure it, 100 maybe, 200, 1,000. So whoever is on the grill for whatever, you know, about considering coming or not, um, especially the Hashmonaim, you know, um, you know, again, everyone's experience is a little different, but ours, for whatever it's worth, has been beyond extremely positive. Wonderful. Somebody's asking about the safety of the issue. Would you like to address that, David? I'm sorry about the what? Safety. I'm sorry. I'm... Safety. Oh. Safety. 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 You mentioned that. Um, there's, I guess we can break safety down into two different things. One is, you know, internal, let's call it, you know, potential risk of theft or anything like that. So in the early years when we were here, there were, you know, some, uh, you know, some issues with that, um, but they were addressed um, probably around 12, 13 years ago for the most part, um, when they increased the, uh, you know, the lighting, you know, the shiv and patched, uh, you know, you know, dealt with some upgraded, I guess, all the infrastructure as far as cameras and that sort of thing. So that's basically for the most part, I'd say 99%, you know, gone away. Uh, the other issue of course is, uh, and, and perhaps, uh, you know, I may be able to, to speak a little bit about this, but um, as you may know, the Yishuv is located in um, be between the Green Line and um, where um, Yehuda Vashamron officially, uh, you know, begins. Um, it was no man's land between 48 and 67. It's privately owned. It was privately owned land, which was sold off, which was purchased in a standard real estate transaction, commercial real estate transaction that is 100% you know, um, you know, uh, secure as far as ownership is concerned. And, um, you know, from, I'm just going to plug in the laptop here, from a safety perspective, we've never had, thank God, or Hashem, any terror incidents at all here. Uh, we have regular security, um, you know, company that, um, you know, is uh, constantly you know, both guarding, you know, we live effectively in a, in a high-end gated, mid to high-end gated community, if you want to compare it to the States, um, you know, with security and a security van that goes around the security road, um, as well as. We lost you. We lost David. <laughs> anyway, David's gone. Okay. We're going to move on to Laura. Hi, Laura. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. You're talking about safety and my little girl just comes and she goes, someone just came in the house. Someone just came in the house. I go downstairs, my husband's best friend just walked in. I'm like, who comes in the house here? Mm -hmm. um, hi everyone, I'm Lara Yitzchaki. Um, Sorry, I have to just take a deep breath. <laughs> um, we've been here almost 10 years. We are, as Ida said, we are so a mixed family. My husband's Israeli. Um, I'm a mixed South African, Israeli and American. Um, we have five kids, ranging from, we have two older boys, a 20 year old and an 18 year old, and then three girls. Um, I see a lot of people asking about teenager life here. Um, so I think that 
Um, the teens here have the most amazing life. It is similar in some ways to what I had as a child, what Rafi was talking about when we were kids in Rehovot. Um, kids walk around here, they come home. We don't want to say what time they come home, because then whatever, but um, everyone feels very, very safe here. There's a lot of things for the kids to do, um, whether it's being part of Ne'a Kiva, whether it's, um, there's actually a program for the teens called the NAR. Um, right now, they're having a wonderful Ketana, a camp going on with amazing things going on. They do special things. They do chesed, the kids do. They do programs that are incredible. Um, the teens here are the, run, the ones that run the programs for Yom Ma'ut, for Yom Zikaron. That was one of the things that, to me, was so are inspiring. Um, they get such values here. I love the values that the kids get from the teachers here, from the schools here. Our two boys went to Nel Um they both had great Rabbanim. I find the Rosh Hashiva to be a very special person. Um, our oldest, when he went to Poland, had um, the Rosh Hashiva had never left Israel because he never wanted to leave Israel. And he went with them to Poland. It was just an amazing experience. Um, a lot of the teachers in elementary school we've been very happy with. Um, our oldest, we have a daughter that's here in elementary school. And then our two daughters that are ones in seventh and ones in tenth. The one in seventh grade is in Niria. When, when you finish elementary school, the boys can stay here in the yeshuv if they'd like to. The girls have options. There is um, a school in Niria, which is a yeshuv close by to us. It's about 20 minutes um, bus ride. Then there's a few schools in um, Modi'in that girls go to. One of our, our oldest daughter goes to. There's a meet in the Upana. Then some kids go to Horev in Yerushalayim. So there's a lot of options. There really are a lot of options. Um, Somebody mentioned maybe, David, I think you mentioned, there's lots of sports going on here. Our boys were into baseball when they first arrived, and then they became more Israeli, and they played basketball. Um, then they went back over to football um, with the Epsteins and with the Waxmans. And um, there's lots to do. There really is. The kids have um, a most amazing life, really, for us, compared to what they had in New Jersey. The weather and just being so confined, and here they can do so much by themselves. Um, Busing to Jerusalem, my seventh grader went on a bus yesterday to, Ju not yesterday, three days ago to Jerusalem, they're on back. So um, from that point of view, they really, they have the life. And for us, um, they really are wonderful people here, both English speakers, Hebrew speakers. Um, as I think Akiva said, lots of chesed, very good people doing a lot of chesed, um, a lot of caring. I was just quarantined because I was next to a friend that was tested positive and so many people reached out and what can I do and how can they help and um, incredible. So um, Hashem, we're very happy where we are and um, hope to stay here for a long time. There's a few questions <laughs> on the chat. How far is Jerusalem? How long does it take you to get to Jerusalem? The internal buses, do you need a car? Can you, can you answer some of those questions? Um, sure. So I think Edith did right before. Um, it is easier to, to have a car, but that being said, there's buses outside of Ayushuv to um, Jerusalem every few minutes. Uh, the bus probably takes, again, depending if it's rush hour or not, um, but if by car from, from us to Jerusalem, when it's not rush hour, it could take about 30 minutes. Um, the girls that go by bus to Chorev, Again, it depends when, but maybe it takes them 45 minutes, I'm thinking. Um, there's busing also outside the Yeshuv to Bechemesh. There's into Modi'in. There's to Bnebrak. And then there's buses from here, or the kids take Trampim from inside of the Yeshuv to Modi'in. And then they go on trains anywhere. They go on trains or on buses. They get everywhere. Um, so it is easy to get around, definitely. Yeah. Yeah comes into the issue to take people up or you have to walk outside the issue to get onto a bus there are i believe two buses um there's a 27 that i think goes into modi'in um my kids could answer this better than me i don't know if anyone from the issue knows any of the parents but the kids for sure would there's i think two main buses one goes i believe to kiryat sefer the neighborhood um closest to us an ultra orthodox neighborhood that has supermarkets, bakeries, um, religious stores. We go there for our dentists, doctors, as well as going to Mondi'in. Um, and then another bus that I think goes, um, 
it's internal, but I think it goes to the mall. And then just outside of the Yeshuv, it's a five or 10 minute walk, depending where you live. Just outside, there's a bus station, which takes you, as I said, to Jerusalem, Beit Shemesh, um, Bnei Brak. Um, and you can also go five minutes out of um, Hashmonim to Tzomet Shilat. You can take a bus on Aish to Tzomet Shilat, and from there you can take buses, I think, to pretty much everywhere in the country. And, and people are coming in and out. Is, Sorry? This, is there a security guard at the front of the issue? Yes. Yes, there is a security. There, there is um, there is a fence all around the yeshuv, and there's what's called the kitat koninut. Like a, there, there's a security around the yeshuv. Um, they drive around, and there is someone that looks um, at everyone when they come into the yeshuv. I feel very safe here. There is an Arab village just outside of a yeshuv, but you don't have to drive through it to get into Hashmonim. It's like after us, and you know, thank God, thank God, be you know, I, I don't know. I feel very, very safe here, as do my kids. Great. Okay, thanks, Laura. We're gonna go to Hashira. <laughs> Hi. Shira is an old friend of mine. I'm so glad to see you. Hi there, Kim. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you were working very late. So I can answer the exercise questions. I see some people wrote. So there are, there is no swimming pool. Yeah, there is no swimming pool here. Somebody asked if there's gyms. There are gyms. I don't know if it was covered that in Hashmanayim itself, there are two different areas, a back area called Ganei Modin and a front area called Ramat. I signed in late, so I'm sorry if it was already mentioned. Um, there is a gym down below in Ganei Modin, separate hours the studio and a gym. And then in the front of Vermont, there's also a full studio that somebody, two residents here opened. In addition to that, me as an exercise teacher, I teach my own classes privately in people's homes that have small groups. And there are a few other, I could think of four exercise teachers probably that do Pilates or yoga, that we have different small groups that we offer. Um, I think there's one yoga for men and women mixed. Otherwise, most of them are pretty separate. And tell us about yourself. You're from New York. Where are you from originally? No, I'm originally from California. There's oh, very few California. of us from California. Sorry, I met you in New York. Sorry, I met you in New York. I okay. did live in New York for six years. I came to Israel. Um, Kim and I were in seminary together. I met my husband in seminary in Jerusalem. I have been in Hashmanayim now for 11 years, close to Laura. Mm -hmm. um, Moved here from Jerusalem after not succeeding in finding a new neighborhood that was affordable and that could provide for a growing family. At the time, it was a good time to come through Hashmanayim, and we found um, a rental. So I'm a renter, um, third time renter here. Always somehow I can find a rent, a uh, house to rent. Not very easy, but you can find. There are more and more people I feel like leaving and moving for whatever reasons. So there are availability, there is availability. Um, my kids are very happy here. They range from three to 14. Um, my street that I live on now, I live in the back area. I used to live in the front area, is very, very social. Kids till about seven at night, just ride their bikes freely. Um, they kind of go into each other's homes and play. There's no setups for play dates, it's very, you could say Israeli hefker or free, but it's um, very casual. We all have each other's phone numbers to say, you know, if a child is here, but everybody is like a family of one another here on my street. Um, it's very, very friendly. Um, what else can I tell you? They're very happy here. My kids do not go to school locally. They go outside, like Laura mentioned, in Shilat, and they've also go to Shalavim, which is inside Modin, on the outskirts of Modin. Um, we either carpool or there's buses that go there, but it's about 15 to 20 minutes, so it's not terrible. And there's other people in the community that go, so you can always find a carpool. So you have your options of different schools. And do the kids have a lot of friends um, that go to the same school as them on the issue or not really? No, I think B'nai Akiva is very important. And if you don't want to go B'nai Akiva, there's Ariel also, depending on your type of community within our yeshuv. 
Um, but they all do have friends. Even if it's one of my child children has um, he's seven, he has two friends, but they're very good friends. They basically are my other children that are here all the time. And he doesn't go to school here and he's very social where he goes to school. So you, and he's not in B'nai Kiva. So just by where you live, just good neighbors, just um, kids who have the same age. Somebody asked, is there a Kahila WhatsApp group? I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on that one. I know where I live in Gane Modin. They are in the midst of trying to start more of a community based, especially for women, to bring women and children more involved. Here, I think it's based more on each individual shul where you go. And there are many, many shuls. So depending on what your shul is and where you're involved in is more of your kahila. There's not just, I don't believe, and maybe I don't know because I'm not in it, I don't believe there's just one WhatsApp though. There is a WhatsApp group for the whole Yeshuv that you would get notifications or sales or if someone has Corona or somebody died, um, there is that. But I think each Kahila, each Shul might have their own group. How many Shuls are there? Wow. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with 10 to 15. And they range, they range from Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Temani. You have Nate minions. You have the eight o'clock minions. We also have a Chabad here. So that's the later minion. You have every kind. Uh, where I live, there's even Strimals. Um, it's on the scale, it's everything. I mean, we're, I'm sure it was already said, we're a closed yeshuv and we're religious yeshuv, but we have everything. We see everything here and all age groups. And um, you, more. you moved from Modin, right? You were in Modin before? No, we were in Jerusalem. We was, looked in Modin and I'll tell you why I, I liked Hashmanayim is because the variety, I felt Modin and I'm not, saying this negative to anybody else who might be interested in Modin. It was a little too cookie cutter for me. Everything kind of looked too, it's a very planned city and people love that. I liked the diversity coming here to Hashmanayim. I liked in where I live in Ghana that there were hills. Um, I liked that it looked very different. It reminded me more of California than Modin kind of reminded me of Florida. <laughs> no insults, no insults taken. No okay, great. So I'm going to ask the next question. Is Yael on the call? Is Yael on? I don't think she's on. I don't think she is. I didn't see her. No, she hasn't come on. Okay, I'll see where she is. So what I'm going to do is, oh, David, you're back. Where's David? I saw he came on again. Has he disappeared? Yeah, I'm, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. I, do you want to, you were in the middle of, I don't know where we ended up, but uh, do you want to, do you want to mention what you were saying? Yeah, there, there wasn't much more that I was, was going to share, except that I think it was covered by Laura that it is indeed, thank God, you know, very safe here. We've had no, you know, incidents at all. There was one attempted incident in 17 years, you know, that I've been here. Um, you know, so it's a very safe community. Um, we're five minute drive for 10 minute drive, you know, uh, for traffic from Modin. Um, we're, you know, five minutes or so from Kiryat Safer. Um, and, um, you know, we have kind of the best of both worlds here. We have, and we live in effectively in the countryside, but, you know, just five to 10 minutes from a major, uh, you know, metropolitan area, Modin, and, uh, you know, very convenient shopping, um, you know, in both those places. Uh, you know, Shilat, also a lot of shopping just five minutes away. So we kind of get the feeling of, um, you know, both being in the country and very suburban type of environment, as well as, you know, just a few minutes away from, uh, you know, a metropolitan environment. So that's pretty much the ground I was going to cover. Hope oh, that's helpful. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a few questions about um, what's happening on the issue of, I know there's one pizza place. Is that correct? And I'm a colleague. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there is one pizza shop. There's a there's a Macola, um, which is very very fully stocked with uh, you know um, both Israeli and American products, all the brands that you're familiar with. Uh, many of them are there. Um, 
and uh, the Makolet guy who runs Makolet Dudu is a great guy, and he's always open to special requests as well if needed. So you can pretty much get everything you need on Yishuv. But you know, today you can order online, uh, you know, groceries very easily. There's delivered from all the major, um, most of the major, you know, online deliveries, um, supermarket chains, Supercell, um, you know, Rami Levy. So we we. We personally do online ordering for most of our shopping, um, most of our groceries, um, and we fill in, you know, from the uh, from the Makolet. Um, so you can pretty much get everything you need. I'd say within a 15 minute drive, uh, you know, radius, uh, if not, uh, you know, closer. Great. Um, unfortunately, I just Yael, who is one of our partners that we work with in real estate, she's unable for some reason, she's having technical issues and she can't get on the phone call right now. So I work with Yael as well about the real estate options in uh, Hashmanayim. And anybody who has questions, you can direct them to me um, on my email. I'm going to put it out there. Kim, K-I-M-L, Bash, B-A-S-H, at gmail.com. I'll put it on the chat and uh, also find me on Facebook. You can send me a message. But from my understanding, I have been to Hashmanaim. It's a beautiful place. Um, there are lots of houses. There are houses and the rentals range depending on, and please, those are, who live there, please correct me. It really depends on the location of the house and also if it's a newer house, an older house. And rentals can range from 8,000 to 11,000 shekels a month from my understanding. You can, you can chime in, everybody. And buying options, um, again, it really depends on what it is, but anything from between, I'm giving an approximation here, but from two and a half million shekels up to four million shekels, even, even more expensive than that. So there's some very beautiful houses, um, basements, attics. You know, a lot of people will rent out their basement um, to younger families. Um, Maybe one of you can help me out here. Rafi, Lara, you can give me some guidelines here because I was hoping your air would be on the call. Yeah, sure. So rentals, as you said, um, there are some places that are even less than 8,000. Again, it depends on what part of the of the issue if you want to rent. Um, but I would say a good price range is somewhere between 8 and 11. And then buying also, I would say, as you said, probably uh, you could get some, some houses that are older, smaller for 2.75 in that neighborhood. And then I would say for a house that um, is probably around 330 square meters that was built within the past 10 years, it's probably going to go for about 3.3 .3 to 3.4 million shekel. You know, of course, you can get single homes that go for a lot more, um, but that that is kind of will give everyone a, a good sense of, um, you know, of what the, the rates go for. And uh, if it helps in terms of, you um, uh, you know, in terms of mortgages, it really, it, you know, fluctuates based on what you're putting down. But if, you know, I would say you can budget somewhere in a neighborhood of between around nine, 10,000 shekel a month for a house that is going for about 3.2, 3.3, assuming that you're putting it down about 30, 35%. So, you know, that, that changes, of course, based on all the mortgages and things like that. But if you're looking to budget, um, rentals are uh, around eight to 11,000 a month. And if you're buying, I'd probably be in that similar uh, price range if you're putting down about 30% or more on a house. I just want to interject. Sometimes you can find a house for rent in, in uh, Ghana between six and seven. You can, if you're lucky. Okay. Yeah, Ail was telling me there's this big, beautiful house she sent me today that when these things come on the market, they last sometimes days and then they're gone already. So it seems sometimes the rentals go from one family to another in the Yeshuv um, as families get, you know, larger. So it seems that things are in quite high demand. One thing I did notice when I came there, I was very impressed how big and spacious everything. You had proper backyards, you know, coming from Yerushalayim, I actually live in the old city, so we don't get much green, if any. So um, it was just impressive to see really big houses um, and lots of space and uh, felt just very like normal, normal living um, for those people coming from, uh, from outside, from, from America, Canada, South Africa, are used to bigger houses. Um, so are there any questions? I'm just going to go through my list of anybody who was answering, um, who had sent me a list of the questions. 
Somebody's asking if there's a local um, post office on Hash in Hashmanayim. There is um, there is this, a small post office that's open um, every day. Well, they just changed it because of Corona. I think it used to be open every morning for an hour, and then in the evenings, maybe every other day. Um, but that's really that's just to pick up your your post. If you need to send out, um, I would either go to uh, Kiryat Sefer, which again is a five minute drive or else in Modi'in, and someone was also asking about the mall. So the closest mall is in Modi'in, which is without traffic, probably less than 10 minute drive. There's a post office there, um, pharmacy, everything that you would need. Um, so yeah, so you can pick up your, your, your post, your mail here on the Yeshu, um, but to send stuff out, you would have to go out of the Yeshu. Is there a, like in terms of Anglos, is there more like people from America that are on the, on the Yeshu of, would you say it's predominantly like, I know there's a few South Africans. Is it just very mixed from different, different areas? I mean, different um, international. You can, find, you can find certain pockets of people, but it, the predominant is definitely American. And I'd say definitely East Coast. Yes, there are UKs here. <laughs> and UKs are great. We have UK, we have Brazilian, um, Help me out, guys. A Scottish, a few Indian, a few. Okay. <laughs> um, you have, you have a lot of uh, Yemenites. You have uh, yeah. Moroccans, um, Australians, uh, even Russians. The French people. Uh, but it's a mix. They're, they're, French, you have everything. It's, it's very a, few Russians. It's though. a kibbutz galiot. I mean, it's yeah. an amazing yeah. place. It is predominantly. Um, in, in terms of the uh, people from outside of Israel, predominantly from America and Canada, but um, there's certainly people from everywhere. It makes it uh, a lot of fun, actually, and been in people's houses, different traditions they have, and uh, it's, it's people are very friendly and love sharing their traditions. It's a, it's a very nice. It's nice for the kids to see something new. Do they? Do they have like on a on a Shabbos a community like Kiddush at all in some of the local sh shuls? Um, the Ameri the more American shul uh, called Glenwood, I think, has a official Kiddush uh, like four times a year, I think. But then obviously there are Kiddushim for Smachot um, at our shul at Ramon. They always have a Kiddush twice a year for the new um, recruits for the army to to sort of. Uh, honor them and um there will always be kiddushim for uh let's say the after um simchas torah um they'll have the chatan breshit and chatan torah throw a kiddush sometimes um they're, they're they always find a reason to have a kiddush but it's not something that's every single week uh, which i actually like i think that the, the kiddush culture gets a little out of hand sometimes so it's it's you know once maybe you know, people have all the kiddushes in their ha in their homes for their own private smachot. Um, there, there's enough around, but it's not like every single week. So, okay, Are there, I'm going to open it up to the floor. So, anybody who wants to ask questions, be free to unmute yourself. Let's look on the chat box if anybody. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Hi, Jessica. Hi, hi. So I'm Jessica Stockman from Las Vegas, and um, I visited Hajmanaim some years ago with my son just driving through. We were looking for, you know, communities, whatever. But I just want to share with the group that it felt um, just driving. It felt very um, normal. <laughs> Like there were, people aren't honking at you at every stop sign. There's, you know, very polite and friendly and waiting. And um, so it's just a, a, just driving through, I can tell you, uh, it was a, a nice feel. And um, yes, and I want to thank everybody uh, in Hajman Naim for taking the time to be here and answer all of our questions. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Rafi is going to also, I, I partner with two very special people on this call. 
Rafi and Lara, who run an amazing organization called Olim Advisors. So it's going to be a little bit of a repeat for those who've been on the call before, but I'd like them to share, I don't know who's going to talk, Rafi or Lara, just a little bit about what they do. So I'm the older one, so I'll go for, <laughs> I'll go first. Um, so thanks, Kim, for, for organizing this, and I've been in a number of these Zoom calls, and I think it's amazing just to answer people's questions. And really, uh, we know from personal experience how daunting and overwhelming the whole LEI experience can be, especially if you're trying to figure it out from abroad. And so uh, about five years ago, Laura and I got together and we said, let's try and help people that are, that, that are thinking about making Aliyah. Let's see if we can really help them with the practical challenges and, and help them find communities and homes and schools and things like that. And so the first thing that we did is we spoke to Nefesh Benefesh and we asked them, we, we asked them if, a, if there's a need for this. And if there is, is this something that they do? And so they said there's absolutely, absolutely a need to, to um, give people this guidance and it's not something that they really focus on. And so that's one of the, the common questions that we get is how are we different from Nefesh Benefesh? And that's in essence the difference is that Nefesh Benefesh is amazing in getting you uh, through the bureaucracy, getting you approved, the Jewish agency, they do all that. But when it comes to the practical challenges that you have, like finding community, like finding a home, like shipping, uh, you know, things that you have to do beforehand. And then once you get your reality kind of sinks in and then you have to go to the bank, you have to go to Misrat Akita, Misrat uh, you have to set up utilities. And so there's a number of things that are challenging and frustrating and time consuming. And so that's really the essence of what we do is that from the moment you sign up, which typically is from six months to a year before you make Aliyah, all the way through six months to a year after you make Aliyah, we're here to guide you through the process, to answer your questions. If you want to make a doctor's appointment, besides introducing you to Akiba and Sharon, we can introduce you to other people as well, other doctors, and, and really help you navigate the system. If you have kids and, and they need special help or pun or whatever the case may be, we're really here to make this experience a lot less stressful, a lot less daunting, and really um, make your klita very seamless. And so um, what, what, what I'll do is I'll just put in our contact information in the chat so you can reach out to Laura myself. We're happy to talk to anyone about making Aliyah, whether or not you end up using our services or not. We just love uh, helping people make this decision. And every time one of our clients makes Aliyah, we feel like we're going through the experience again. And it's just so exciting and inspiring to do that. And so if there's anything that we can do to help you, any questions that you have, just feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you so much. I want to just add in the reason that I, another reason I started doing these calls is that my parents, they actually made Aliyah in their 70s. And they had come from living in South Africa all their lives. And it wasn't easy for them to come. But they came because they were idealistic. They were Zionists. They felt that, you know, it was especially having grandchildren. They didn't want to be once a year grandparents. So they were, we were very blessed to have them living next to me in the old city for five years. Unfortunately, they both passed away this year. So um, this series of, of Aliyah and um, finding communities for people is in their merit. Um, and I think that anybody who can make a change in their 70s, I think anybody can do it. And another thing, Israel is so diverse. There are so many wonderful places available for people. So please continue to join us on these calls. And if anybody would like me to showcase a particular community, please don't hesitate to contact me privately. We are next week going to be doing Iyamim, which is in Netanya. It's also a, a more newer neighborhood with a lot of Anglos. Um, and our focus is to find Anglos. And even for those people who really want to be integrated into a in more Israeli neighborhood, that's not really, not because of anything against that, just that's not really what we're doing here. We're trying to find a soft landing for people because it is very difficult to um, come into a place where nobody speaks the same language. It's not just the language, it's, it's people, like-minded people like yourselves. So we try and find where there is at least a 20% um, Anglo-speaking population of people. So please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we're going to be doing uh, yeah, yeah, Mim next week, as I said. Then we're going to be doing Rehovot. Then we're going to go up north. I think we're going to go to Haifa. I'm not sure yet. We, we play it by ear depending on the demand of what is out there. What I also just want to add in, and maybe Lara and Rafi, maybe Lara, you can add in. 
a lot of people ask me now, you know, what's going on in America or abroad, you can't get to Israel right now. So some just practical tips that people thinking of Aliyah right now, what can they do to prepare themselves? What do they need to do? So the first thing is if you are coming from North America or the UK is to contact Nefesh Benefesh if you haven't done so. You have to um, fill out the application and there's a list of documents that you need to get. And unfortunately, because of COVID right now, um, it is not as easy to get some of the documentation. So that's definitely something that I would do. Um, there is a time frame involved and it's important that you speak to Nefesh Benefesh and the Jewish Agency to understand everyone needs to do a background check now, which is only valid for six months. So it's important to know when to do that. Um, and, and really to, to, to reach out to the representatives. And if you don't get an answer or you're getting stuck, you can definitely reach out to us, but they are the first, the first step. We only come into the picture once people are processed and once people have handed in all their paperwork, there's, you know, as much as we have contacts here with the different government offices, you do have to go through um, step by step and hand in everything. Um, but just um, try to plan as early as you can, as soon as you can. And, um, and as I said, understand the time, the timing, because there's a certain timing for when you get your Aliyah visa, for how long that's for. Um, so get all those answers from Nefesh Benefesh or the Jewish Agency. There's a global center for the Jewish Agency. And, um, and as my brother said, if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out to us, whether you sign up or not. We speak to people all day long. We try to help as much as we can. Um, again, the bureaucracy on that end is not anything that we can really help with. People all the time are calling us and, and uh, you know, how can you help us with getting the paperwork done? And unfortunately, some of the offices are not open yet. So um, that's just a waiting, you know, unfortunately. But as soon as that is, as soon as you get everything, um, Go through, speak to the Jewish Agency, wait to get your, um, your interview, and then uh, hopefully you'll be on your way to coming here. Even if you have to quarantine, people are very upset that they have to quarantine for 14 days. I tell them all the time, it's worth it. I just finished quarantine, it's fine. <laughs> Not easy, but you get through it. <laughs> well, I have, a few, I have a few clients coming in now, and they basically, those who are lucky to have Israeli passports and able to get here, um, they are going to quarantine for two weeks and then basically stay for their holiday and then go back into quarantine in America. Just some practical tips that I've been telling people what I think is important to do. If Aliyah is seriously on the cards, I would start also learning Hebrew online right. um, as much as you can. There's so many amazing programs for your children as well to listen to, uh, YouTube videos as well. And also in terms of uh, downsizing, getting rid of all the stuff in the house. You know, a lot of people are saying they've got so much stuff, they need to start packing up and selling and, I think that takes a lot of time. So these are just practical things that I would start doing as soon as possible. So um, I also think a lot of people ask me from a property perspective, the market in Israel is incredibly strong. I am very, very busy with people who are either trying to secure a house in Israel or who are actually making Aliyah. People are, believe it or not, buying things unseen. And what that means is they're sitting there brothers, sisters, uncles, you name it, to look at properties with me, which is something I, I've really done. Usually we do that when we're selling, you know, off-plan projects, which aren't built yet, which we have investors that do that. So it's definitely changed the market. But Israeli real estate is strong. It's a solid investment. Um, so, and I'm happy to uh, let anybody, you know, anybody can reach out to me. Unfortunately, I said Yael's not on the call, so, but if Hashmanaim is a place that you want to look into, please feel free to contact me. And if everybody on the call from Hashmanaim is open to having people contact them that are on this call, please put your information on the chat so that people can contact you. I'm not sure, is there a Hashmanaim? Nefesh Benefesh rep, or is there somebody there that's a point person, or is it just, I'm not sure, is there anybody that people need to contact directly, or people are open to getting converse, uh, calls or emails? Um, there is someone in the Yeshua that works for Nefesh Benefesh. I don't know if she's a contact person for here. I, I'm not sure on the website, on the Nefesh website, who the contact is, Hashmonaim. Um, but you're more than welcome to contact us. With pleasure, we're happy to answer any questions for you. Great. Excellent. Any questions? Let me look at the chat quickly before we end off. Okay.
Do you have to wear masks here? Yes. Yes. Okay. I actually nearly got a fine the other day, not because I wasn't wearing it, but I had was down over here and I was on the phone and they came and gave me a little bit of a warning. So yes, you do have to wear your masks. Um, Kim, I see here some questions, medical questions. So we have Kupot Cholim five minutes away, both in Modi'in and Kiryat Sefer. Kiryat Sefer is five minutes away. Modi'in is about 10 minutes away. Hospitals, we have Jerusalem. You've got Hadassah and Karim, Hadassah, Harat Sofim. Um, you've got, um, oh, I'm forgetting, two other hospitals in Jerusalem at least. And then there is Tel Aviv. There's uh, Shiba Tel Shomer. There's, uh, so you're, you're close to many hospitals. Not that anyone should need, but we're definitely close to plenty. Okay, any other questions? Thank you so much everybody for your time. It's been amazing. And I've personally, as I said, been to Hashmanayim. I think it's a wonderful community, very special place and a melting pot of different types of people, which makes it, um, I think, uh, you know, very flavorful and a, and a great place to bring up children. Um, and again, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And thank you everybody for coming on. I really, really appreciate everybody's time. And uh, I hope to see you all in Israel. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna stay on if people want to. Stay on. See if there's any questions. Thank you so very much for this. Somebody asking more about the real estate. I will put anybody in contact with our uh, partner broker who lives on in Hashmanayim. Again, they're big properties. You're looking at 300 square meters. Um, with land around it. So they're very nice sized properties. If that answers the question. Hold on, who came on here now? I will send uh, information on Akiva. Okay. Great. Lisa, I'll respond back to you, okay? Directly. If anybody wants to send me a private message, please do so, kimlbash at gmail.com or my phone number, which is on the chat as well. Physician's assistant, I'm not sure about that. So uh, my, the person that we work with in Hashmanayim, her name is Yael, and unfortunately she was supposed to be on the court tonight. She was having technical difficulty. I will send you her contact information. Please send me a private message, kimlbash at gmail.com or on Facebook, Kim Bash. Rachel, did I cover all the questions? She's on silent. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Thank good. you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. That was amazing. I really appreciate all the panelists and everything that everyone does to help people with this process. You should all have many brachas. Amen. Thank you so much. Of course. Yeah. Let's see if there's any other questions here. Yeah. Okay, Laura put up your ales email. It's yaelwolf22 at gmail.com. And wolf is W-O-O-L-F. Okay, and she works with us. So be in contact with her. She has some great properties. And I will see everybody, God willing, next week when we cover Yaya Mim. So I'm going to say good night to everybody. Brianna, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. God bless. And there will be a copy of this recording. Um, so if anybody would like to send it to their friends, family, or would like to listen over again to this recording, please feel free to contact me and I will send you a copy of the link. Have a good night, everybody, and have a Shavuot of a good week.